So if you are to check, you will see that uh, on the calculations or the formulas that you are going to have considering an RSC Pi filter, uh, this circuit is actually similar to what we had before uh, considering an LC Pi filter. This time, we are now having capacitor, resistor, capacitor forming a Pi like that. So it can also be referred to as a CRC uh, circuit, which is a CRC filter in this case. That is, uh, we are going to consider this, the capacitor, resistor, capacitor. This resistance is different from our load resistor. There is the load resistor. And I said before that the values across or over the load resistance are the ones that we are going to indicate with a prime. But just after the rectifier, we use the normal values, the normal current IDC and VDC. But across the RL, we are going to use the prime. So we're not going to waste much time. This is simply uh, similar to what we had before. So that is considering our RC Pi filter. Uh, we are going to see uh that the calculations let's just write formulas in this case so like i said this also can be referred to as a crc filter capacitor resistor filter so you must be able to uh understand that this is just one and the same all right so on our formulas as we are going to see this time we are going to have what we refer to as the resultant dc voltage the resultant DC voltage is that DC voltage, guys, that we are used to. That is the resultant uh, DC voltage, which is taken at the what? At the output, at the output across the resistor, at the output across this. That's where we have uh, this V prime uh, DC there at the output. So that will be uh, V prime DC. And that is equal to RL over RL plus R times VDC, which is the same formula as what we had uh, on an LC pi. Uh, also for the current, we're gonna have same formula as what we had before, which is simply our VDC over what? Over RL at the output. Remember, this is considered or this is taken uh, from the output side. And uh, at the output, that's where we have got our load resistor that's where we have our load resistor uh then also we're going to talk of the ripple voltage okay remember your ripple voltage your ripple voltage uh that is going to be calculated just this one because there are two so do not mistaken the normal ripple voltage that we are going to have before then after the ripple voltage that we have after there are two that you have to consider. So in this case, I'm just going to consider the normal uh, ripple voltage, which is given from the VDC minus VDC bar, which we can also take it as the taken from the resultant as the resultant AC when given as the resultant AC, uh, which is our ripple voltage is going to be uh, at the output, remember this must be at the output, so it's going to be XC, but to use the reactance of the second capacitor, because we are considering the output there, so it's going to be square root of R squared plus XC uh, squared, this is the second resistor uh, the second reactance of the capacitor the second uh, capacitor that you have to consider there uh, because it must be at the output part, at the output, then you multiply to the one that you are used to before, before, which is our normal ripple voltage. Okay, so you must consider where, which part are you working from? So you see that definitely here yeah, there will be need for us to obtain the reactances, our XC. So our XC, which is representing the reactants, uh, is going to be 1 over uh, 4 pi FC for a full wave. Remember, I said this, it must be for a what? For a full wave. And the 1 over 2 pi FC, the one that we are used to, is going to be used when you are working with what? With a half wave. 
when working with a half wave. This is what you're going to need. Then also the ripple factor. Okay, uh, you're gonna consider part of the ripple factors. Another part that is also important. Calculating or determining of the ripple factor. So our R in that case, ripple factor can be R or it can be written as gamma. Uh, that is across C1, we are going to use uh, the ripple voltage over VDC. This is across what? Across C1, remember? Across C1, that is when we are having the normal DC, this one across C1. Then across C2, what are we using? The bar, the prime, this VDC prime. So you must be able to notice this is across what? Across C1. Then R is equal to V prime. Um, in this case, we're going to have uh, V prime again. But this is across R2, across C2, sorry. It is going to be across uh, the capacitor 2. We have to consider it's across which capacitor in that case. It's across the second capacitor, so you must consider. So when you are given about the DC component, they are simply asking you to calculate this VDC. That is your DC component in that case. They can also refer to as the DC uh, component. And the AC component is our... RMS voltage in that case, they can consider this as the AC component. They can consider like that. Which part are they referring to? It's one and the same thing. So as you can see, we do not have much formulas there. Uh, it is just for you to understand how to apply, and we shall see that in our typical exam, uh, in our typical questions, I mean, uh, but what you need at least understand your diagram so that you understand between these, where is our VDC, which VDC are we talking about? Which current are we talking about? 